this nobody's done wrong uh, in uh, in this one. Uh, you know, there is productivity loss, uh, but till now the wealth uh, erosion or wealth destruction, unlike what had happened in two thousand and uh, eight and nine when banks went under. I mean, this is not what it is. It uh, it seems a lot more surreal. And the reason we use that word, word surreal because all of us are locked down uh, with it. Plus also we have uh, no idea when the vaccine is going to come in and uh, how this spread is going to get uh, prevented. So you know, at best, we all are uh, sort of uh, finding solution and drawing some parallels uh, from, the, uh, from the past and then getting in some surveys at the ground, uh, ground level. Shobit, uh, who heads our uh, capital markets uh, business, is going to talk about funding. Kaval had requested that if we can focus on funding. And uh, Prashant, uh, you know, who will be on the screen, he heads our research. He's been an author uh, of the report that we published uh, uh, last week. I'm going to cover three sections, um, very briefly, offices and retail, uh, and then uh, more elaborately on the residential following which uh, Shobit is going to take on the funding part, you know, where we are going to be able to get in uh, uh, the, the funding. So on the uh, offices, um, I'll divide into two parts. One is the supply and one is the demand uh, in that. You know, on the supply, on the supply, we have, uh, we, we were going to deliver 47 million square feet in 2020 uh, calendar year. Uh, we believe out of that 15% is going to get knocked off because there will be a delay in construction. Uh, we, uh, th this delay in construction is largely going to be because the supply chain is going to get disrupted, labor is not going to be there, a lot of engineers that were going coming in from China, uh, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, will not come in. So 15% delay in completion that will bring down the uh, total uh, construction that will be delivered from 47 million uh, square feet to 40 million uh, square feet that is about 4 crore square feet if this continues for a little longer then it can get down by 30 uh, percent and then 33 million square feet from 47 million square feet the supply can come to 33 million square feet i think what is very important is the demand and, uh, you know, this is where we will draw the parallels from 2009. Uh, I said, you know, that we used to run uh, JLL. So, you know, we have the data uh, available. It is going to be a similar impact on uh, this occasion as well. You know, the, in 2007, uh, India used to lease about 35 million square feet. Uh, immediately after the global financial crisis, it had a severe impact and we came down to 21 million square feet. You know, I, I kept on resisting in JLL that, you know, we were not going to get impacted. We were decoupled. We were not joined at the hip with the U.S. We were insulated uh, from the U.S. Little did I realize that each year, American corporates had taken more space on lease in India than Indian corporates. If the American economy suffered, it had a big time impact on the office market in India. And I think is uh, this time the way it is looking like that the American corporations will go through uh, pain and hence, you know, they, sto they stop expansion, uh, they, uh, they start to reduce the size of the space that they take, they start to renegotiate the rent downwards. Many of them are uh, out of the lock-in period and hence they are free to exit that, uh, that, that space. Uh, many of them just give up space. Uh, because you know they are not expanding in the in the U.S. and hence you know they are they don't really need uh, that uh, space. So this year we were projecting the demand to be 42 million square feet. Uh, we think is that the base case is a 17 percent drop in the demand, uh, which will bring it down to 35 million square feet, and the downside case is a 34 percent drop in the demand, which will bring it really to 28 million square feet. Mind you, you know, if you draw parallel from 2007 to 9, we were coming in from 35 million square feet to 21 uh, million square feet. And, uh, you know, we are saying that the downside is 34% from 42 million square feet, uh, which can bring it down as low as 28 million square feet on the offices. This is based on, uh, on five largest 
developers that we had connected who are office uh, developers, which also includes private equity, who owns uh, much of the space, and the five largest corporates in India, the foreign corporates, asking them that what their demand was going to be uh, over the next 12 months and how do they see uh, that uh, position. So one sector that we had thought was may have got insulated on the office will get um, impacted. Uh, certainly if the US economy continues to remain uh, the way it is. The second one I'll quickly cover is the retail. Uh, I mean, it has been badly hit just like the hotels. Um, you know, they, they were the first one to close as malls. Uh, they're perhaps going to be the last one to open. You know, within the malls, uh, the theaters have been badly impacted. We also think is even if the mall was to open, theater would not open. Uh, quickly, and this is uh, again from the survey speaking with uh, the multiplexes, uh, and they are saying is that we don't think uh, they also don't think restaurants will get uh, opened up uh, that quickly, even if their lockdown was to uh, really open up. Uh, on Monday, I was on a webinar, and uh, you know I was representing the developers uh, with the Retailers Association of India. So this is the top 1,100 retailers. Uh, we have an association called as RAI Retailer Association of India, and in that, uh, you know, I was just explaining it to them that you know you can't just continue to ask the developers for rent free beyond the lockdown period. Lockdown, I know everybody will have to find a solution and perhaps give uh, you know rent free during that period of time. Retailers were asking that after the lockdown period also for two to three quarters, we're just not going to be able to do it. And you know, the chairman, uh, many of you will know, is uh, Nagesh. Uh, ex uh, shopper stop, uh, you know, he got a little harsh and he says, Anu, do you realize 50% of the retailers may not actually survive this uh, onslaught? Um, and you know, that is that is where we are coming in. If you want the malls to go empty, I mean, you know, that's okay. If you think is that you want your partner to perish uh, and you don't want to help us uh, in the rentals post the lockdown period, we're telling you is about 30% of the retailers are so thinly capitalized at this moment in time, that they would just not be able to go through it. And you know, I asked a question to him, and I said, "Is Nagesh, is it just about the rent that uh, you know these guys are not able to sustain it for you know six to nine months?" He said, "No, it is that the merchandising, the fashion merchandising, is kept in the malls. Sixty percent of their cost is that fashion merchandising. By the time the malls would open up, the fashion would have gone. It would have changed." That merchandise is of zero value now, as a result of which they would have no ability to be able to take over uh, those losses and many of these uh, will, will go down. In fact, on the FNB, the guy who was there, he said is that um, in his opinion, 78% of the FNB guys may not survive the next 12 months if um, you know, restaurants weren't to be open uh, early in that. Given this background on the uh, on the supply and demand, I'll give you our numbers. On the supply, there was 8.4 million square feet, which is nearly 84 uh, lakh uh, square feet that was going to get completed and delivered this year. We think is, uh, unlike the office on the malls, they were a little bit further down on completion and hence the, uh, the, the impact will be 30%, which will get delayed to next year. Uh, and the downside is that it may be really 50% because many of the mall owners may not also want to open the malls uh, in this period of time. So that 8.4 million can come down to 5.9, 59 lakh square feet or as low as 42 lakh square feet, which is in the same proportion as what the demand uh, we're expecting to really, really come down um, in a base case, 30%. So the demand was going to be 6.2 million square feet this year, 2020. 30% uh, of it, which would have been 4.3 million square feet. And the worst case is that 50% of the demand goes away, which is really 3.1 million square feet. So net net, you look at it, that the activity would have gone down, but net net, you know, it is really still matching the demand and the, and the supply. The trouble is going to be with the existing uh, mall owners that how do they, over the next two, three quarters, make sure that their partners remain strong and yet they are able to continue to service their LRDs uh, because many of these retailers may not be able to give pure rent. They may give a percentage of revenue, but that will uh, significantly drop in comparison to the rental. The third and the longest part that we're going to discuss is really on the housing. 
Um, what we requested uh, as soon as COVID-19 hit, uh, we have 2,000 uh, sort of paid employees on the sales part. And, uh, you know, Prashant uh, utilized these uh, 2,000 sales guys and he said that they go and speak with, on the phone, uh, with their 10 top potential customers who are part in the next uh, two months, uh, the apartments through these. So, you know, this, what we are now going to give you an uh, analysis is also from 20,000 likely home buyers that we thought that over the next 60 days, we're going to buy uh, the, uh, the, the projects. When they did the survey, it ranged from two parts. One was uh, they used a lot of galis, a lot of foul language to the guy that how dare you even call me up in this period of time. And second, very interestingly and very positively uh, was that they were saying, is, look, my parents have been saying that I should be investing into real estate. I have been uh, you know, playing on the stock market. You know, the stock market has taken a, a big beating. Um, you know, in these hard times, I wish I had a hard asset with me and not just uh, paper, paper money. Uh, they also felt that the EMIs will continue, the interest rates will continue to go down and, you know, that will become an attractive proposition. And also what our GCC office, the Middle Eastern office came back is that the devaluation of the rupee and insecurity uh, that is happening largely in the US and the UK is propagating a lot of leads coming in. The transactions haven't happened, but it's just become 10, 12, 15% cheaper for these guys uh, staying overseas at the same price because the rupee has devalued and suddenly there is uh, that much more excitement for them to be able to look at property in India. Plus also their base country is going through some turmoil and they feel is that that will have a larger impact on the economy of that country versus they still feel is and more confident that India will be able to brace through uh, this uh, entire. So in uh, terms of the numbers I'm going to give and then I'll give you a little bit of color going forward what is going to happen in terms of the numbers and this is the top eight cities uh, numbers the in 2019 uh, there were the launches in number of units were 2 lakh units that had been launched in the top eight, uh, eight cities. We think is that uh, the launches in a base case scenario will come down by 25%. So it will come down to 177,500. If this lockdown extends for longer, then it can be 30% impact, which will be 165,000. Uh, Anuj, sorry, uh, there has been some uh, thing that your voice is a little, you need to a little bit increase the voice if you can do that. Okay. Uh, is it uh, is it better? I'm just going to come closer to the screen. Yeah, yeah, should be better. I think some of them were not able to hear you well, so that's the whole thing. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, no problem. Uh, so maybe Anuj, if you can repeat some of the points because we couldn't get you. This is nine year high. I just able to join in. Okay, then were you able to? Uh, so should I start from the residential? I think so. Yes, so yes, so and a voice still little better if you can have the phone little closer to you. You know. Okay, I, I, I may just wear the headphones then. Uh, it may just yeah, that's that's better. That's better, Anuj. Easier. Yeah. And then, by is it better? Superb. Super. Super. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I, I was just saying is that on the on the housing, having done the survey with 20,000 potential customers who we thought were going to be buyers uh, over the next 60 days, uh, there were two sides. One was the negative where they used uh, very foul language with our people saying is that how dare you even call us uh, at this moment in time to buy a house. To the other side where they said is that, you know, my parents have been saying uh, that I should invest into real estate. I should have a house of my own. Uh, two uh, saying is that, you know, I've lost a ton of money in the stock market. Had I invested in real estate, you know, it would have been better. Um, two saying is that the interest rates are likely to come down and this will be a fantastic opportunity for us to look at it. And finally, I was saying is that the NRI customers are, are showing a fair amount of interest uh, because the rupee has got uh, devalued and their home country, which is largely the UK and U US, is uh, starting to look a little bit more troublesome, not only in the COVID-19, uh, they're looking at post-COVID-19 that the economy will take uh, 
a beating. Certainly in Europe, it does appear, and uh, also in the uh, in the U.S. And hence, you know, there has been more excitement from the NRIs to say is uh, we want to have a look at uh, this. I've just gone on to the numbers. Um, I said is last year the launches were in the top eight cities, two lakh thirty six thousand units. We believe is this year, given that there could be some trouble with the uh, with the raw materials and the labor base case 25% lower number of launches and many of our clients whom we have spoken are also considering is that they may not you know some of these launches were in the first three weeks of April and uh, you know they may not uh, wish to launch until they understand what the consumer uh, sentiment is so base uh, case is that 25% decrease in launches 1,77,500 units this year and in terms of downside, if this continues, the lockdown continues for longer than 30% downside, 1,65,000 units. I think where the interesting thing is on the demand side. So whilst the launches last year were 2,36,000 units, the sale was 2,60,000 units. So it was actually more than uh, the new launches. And that's why you continue to see in our graph that the unsold inventory is sh sharply coming down uh, quarter on quarter. Uh, I think it was 13 quarter consecutively where the sales have been more than the new launches as a result, result of it that the uh, unsold inventory had sharply started to come down and which is also reflected in 2019 uh, uh, calendar year units sold versus launched. So 2019 units sold were 2,60,000. We believe is that at least one quarter uh, base case will go away at least 25%. You know, which is quite evident that April, May, June will be very little, very slow uh, that we are going to do it. So that will bring down the sales to 1,96,000. And if this prolongs the downside, we believe there could be a 35% uh, impact on the sales, which will be 1,70,000 units. Mind you, this is coming on the back of 2013 when India used to sell 5,50,000 units. So from 5 lakh 50,000 units, 2019, we came to 2 lakh 60,000 units, which is nearly half. And then from there, we're looking that uh, uh, a downside scenario could be 1 lakh 70,000 units or a base 1 lakh 96,000 units. And clearly, if um, in 2014, you know, Dhawal or Dharmesh would have woken me up at 2 a.m. in the morning, you know, I would have said, as, oh, well, in 2020, India is going to be nearly a million units. Uh, which is about 10 lakh uh, units and look at it from 10 lakh we are now discussing you know between 1 lakh 70 thousand units to 2 lakh units and mind you one other data point that i'll give you is in comparison to this china every year sells 1 crore units i mean we are we are at 1 lakh 70 thousand or 2 lakh they sell 1 crore uh, units on residential uh, every year. There's, there's some uh, little bit of uh, sort of uh, continuation of uh, good news on unsold inventory. In base case scenario, the unsold inventory goes down by 3%. Uh, and in a worst case scenario, it still goes down by 1% because the launches continue to remain lower than the uh, sales. So now uh, going forward, uh, uh, Dhawal had requested if I can cover very quickly two or three points um, and then I'm going to hand over to Shobit to talk about the uh, financial side. So I, I do uh, see consolidation. I mean, all of my friends here, I would not lie uh, saying is that uh, consolidation is not going to happen. Uh, you know, consolidation will, will happen. If anything, it will just hasten that consolidation at this moment in time. Uh, many weak players will cease to exist. And in my opinion, how do I define weak players really on two parameters? Uh, one, those who are not going to be able to do sales um, because of various reasons, they are not being able to you know, push through their agenda on sales. And second is who are very highly uh, levered or uh, don't have sufficient cash to go through it. Um, you know, when I look at our own organization, what is the topmost at my, uh, on the top of my mind is to make sure that there is enough cash to be able to meet up all the commitments. Again, I say is this is different to 2009 because in this one, it is only productivity loss that has happened. If we have the energy to take over the stress over the next two or three quarters, I think we are we're still okay because world hasn't done anything wrong. 
it is not that we've done anything wrong or india has done anything wrong or real estate has done anything wrong in 2009 you know there was a lot that had been done wrong this is a pure productivity uh, crisis and if you have the cash if you are not as levered if you are able to push through uh, the agenda on the sales i think it is uh, it is good last uh, three points that i'll cover is um, one uh, uh, dhawal had asked me about uh, land um, you know should we go out and do joint ventures joint development dm acquisition uh, i was only going to answer in one sentence uh, there are no prizes for jumping in early you know sometimes there are prizes for jumping in early i uh, i think on this one uh, you know there are not going to be any prizes uh, for uh, jumping in uh, early this the uh, other point that i do want to cover is a little bit on the uh, on the fdi and shobhit is going to cover uh, more of it uh, but you know interestingly uh, our survey when we did with these private equity three things that they are saying uh, for india one uh, they are saying is that uh, in our home country back home you know whether it is canada or uh, the us uh, you know the assets have become more attractive in pricing and will continue to become more attractive so some of this money that we were investing in india uh, will find its way back home because suddenly the assets will become more economical more cheaper more attractive second very interesting uh, what they uh, what they gave in this survey was that just like all of us on the screen they're saying we are badly hit as well in our uh, base country so you know one of them said is that he has got three hotels in vegas and all three hotels are shut uh, and you know they yet need to service the banks they yet need to pay uh, the electricity bill they yet need to have the skeleton uh, staff to pay their cost so they're saying we need the money to recapitalize our own assets as well because we've been impacted adversely the third one that they're saying is that uh, usually these funds have uh, limited partners because these funds are uh, they also collect money from others and usually they collect money from sovereign uh, which are like government funds that they collect with they're saying is many of the government funds are saying is that all that money that you've not spent can you please give it back to us it's our request can you please give it back to us because you know we need it in our own home country at this moment in time to find this uh, to fight this uh, pandemic to fight uh, the, uh, the 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 problem and we need that money because our government is asking uh, to give that money to them for the stimulus so you know interesting what uh, what what the private equity is saying and the last point uh, is uh, just uh, again dhawal had requested me to cover is uh, you know what can you do uh, you know is digital selling is online selling you know what what can you do i can tell you the last thing that you should do is just sit hand on hand uh, you know again we have 2000 sales guys so you can well imagine our pain is probably more than your pain uh, you know when you have to pay uh, on the 31st of march the salaries for all these uh, you know 2000 guys so i would say is guys there are sales happening absolutely we are doing i i i would i would say we are at a 15% sales i'm not saying we are at 100% sale we are at 15 15% sale each week we are looking at it that between 8 to 10% we are enhancing uh this sale so it is happening several of the uh, guys on this screen i can tell you is for them the sales are happening this period of time some of it may be that this sale was going to happen anyway before the lock in the lockdown period and it has just moved over some of it has started during the lockdown period and has uh, uh, gone through uh, gone gone through it is the uh, so guys um, you know like we've set up this uh, uh, gel tell sell and you know i'm very happy you know dhawal wants to organize some training with your sales guys first gel with the customer you know there is a lot of database that you have visits done not booked gel with the customer call them up say sir you're okay uh, can we do anything your sales guy don't try and sell that we we did that mistake within the first two days uh, that we went in and that's when these guys gave a lot of gali so gel tell and then you know try and uh, and sell you know the the forces that you have the sales guys should be absolutely fighting fit otherwise they'll get rusted so once the lockdown opens uh, do it lots of schemes are working online Uh, at this moment in time i'll give you one simple scheme just collect 25000 rupees uh from the guys through digital marketing make the payment gateway 
Uh, and say in that is, sir, uh, we give you a confirmation within 30 days of the lockdown, you can come physically inspect the asset. If you do not like it, no questions asked, money back. And we give you a price protection that our price is not going to be lower than what we are selling it to you today. If anything, it'll only go up. This is only an EOI uh, form, but these are hot leads that your team should be uh, really, really working. Focus on collection. It is the best time uh, to be able to focus on it. I mean, we prepared 10 points because, you know, whenever they're meeting up with these prospective buyers, the buyer is saying, oh, property price will come down. How do you protect that argument? Because property price comes down, it's a falling knife. Then you can never sell it only because every time you will go, they will continue to say that. So th those are the 10 points that we've done through videos to explain it to them is that no, this is the right time. This is not going to be lots of things uh, in that. I don't want to, I don't want to take, uh, you know, more time. I, I mean, small thing is, you know, newspapers aren't coming in. Make sure all your prospective buyers, you know, get e-newspapers. Your sales guys are sending every morning uh, to these uh, guys uh, on that. I'm just going to stop here and request Shobit to cover the funding part. And then we'll come back uh, for the next set of uh, inputs that uh, Dhawal had asked us. Shobit. Dhawal is uh, Shobit online. Hi, uh, can anybody, can everybody hear me? Yeah, now we can. Yeah, Shobit, us. superb. Yeah, Welcome, Shobit. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon and hope everybody is safe and healthy. Uh, you know, I, I know Anu just spoken a lot. Uh, so I'm trying, I'll try and be brief. I think he touched upon and, you know, Dhawal had mentioned that he did want to cover developer funding and what's happening in the finance market. I'll try and be brief uh, and then we'll sort of take more questions. Anuj had mentioned about FDI, which I'll cover subsequently, but let me first give you what's going on domestically. Uh, you know, our total exposure is about nine, the total CRE exposure of all banks and NBFCs and HFCs combined to Indian real estate is $93 billion, which is roughly 7 lakh crores. Uh, odd, uh, it combines everybody. All, all lenders put together, right? Of this, roughly 25 to 30 billion, that's 2 lakh crores, was LRD, which is largely with public sector and private sector banks, uh, such as SBI, SDFC, uh, Standard Chartered, LIC. And this was considered a safe product. There were no delinquencies in this product. This was working extremely well uh, till we hit this milestone, which of course nobody could foresee, right? Uh, it, within that now, uh, I think there is a situation that's developed already on the retail side because retail stopped even before lockdown. So now it's been one month since retail centers, all shopping centers have been shut down. Uh, and it's unlikely that we don't know when they're going to come back. And if they come back, will they come back with 100% occupancy, 50% occupancy? How much rent is going to come? So I think that section will require uh, a revisit by the banks. They're looking at it very closely. Uh, but of the 22 lakh uh, crores that I'm talking about, this was less than 15% overall on LRD. So LRD is quite all right. Anuj also mentioned that you know offices may start to uh, to look at uh, downsizing or resizing, but that's not an immediate problem. Uh, rents are being honored. Uh, so March went okay. Uh, so there's no, there's not much of an issue. Going forward, we think on offices side, uh, while doing LRDs, banks will not consider any escalation in rents. Um, and they, will, they may perhaps reduce the loan to value uh, from about 70%, which they were comfortable with, to maybe between 50 and 60%. Uh, but time will tell how the water will find its own level. Uh, I'll focus on residential, which is the large part. It's 80% of all the borrowings is 80% of the physical market. Uh, I think that's a big one uh, and how the credit is going to change. Anyways, even last year, incrementally speaking, the credit was already getting squeezed. Uh, NBFCs had slowed down. Uh, we had issue with certain other, some NBFCs going bankrupt. 
that had that had dented the uh, the whole credit cycle uh, uh, that had uh, dented the credit cycle and now of course with this pandemic and last quarter being a wipeout which from a banking perspective was the best was usually the best quarter right jan to march there was the largest dependence on how these uh, sales would happen how collections will happen and unfortunately that 15 days were the crucial 15 days that got taken away from uh, from the marketplace as a result we think going forward they will the the amount of npas will increase uh, we had estimated about 70 crore out of the 5 lakhs 70000 crores out of the 5 lakhs was under stress i think those numbers will go up and banks will have to relook on how they fund residential projects going forward especially for greenfield projects where the where the cycle is yet to start and we think there will be two changes that will come in one they will put some sales milestone the last few deals that we've done on construction funding apart from getting your approvals in place so land is fully paid up approvals are all secured now they are saying please demonstrate sales so that we can understand the pricing and the velocity they don't want 40% of the project sold but they are saying please sell 10% 15% of the project so that we are able to ascertain that the pricing that you are talking about and the velocity is right number 1 number 2 earlier we were saying about earlier in 2015 it was probably 10 15% of the money that was that was estimated for construction was financed by the bank it went up to 40% i believe that resi will now start mimicking office where they will not depend on any sales or cash flow prior to completion uh, and it will move more and more towards office side where you say you build the build the building and if you do get any money from sales that's well and good Uh, but we are not going to budget for it so i think that whole exercise is uh, you know conversationally starting to happen uh, people are getting uh, busy but let me just sort of give you comfort saying there's enough money available for new projects uh, banks don't have any liquidity issues uh, interest rates are on downward trend uh, repo rates have gone down sbi has already announced that they are moving they are passing on 100% of the benefit to the customer on an immediate basis uh, usually there was a 3 4 months lag uh, that lag is gone uh, so interest rates will come down now let's talk about projects that are stuck uh, for variety of reasons whether they got stuck because of approvals or sales not being enough or financial closure not being there or financial closure being there but you didn't get to draw the money and you required to refinance all of this for that uh, you know government our, our government had started a initiative of a, of setting up a sovereign fund called swami uh, swami's mandate was very well defined uh, they are extremely active even during the slow down they have sanctioned now 33 projects they have 12000 plus crores in their bank account their 50 people team so they are working round the clock to ensure that the projects that are stuck uh and are only requiring capital to take it to the end that money is available to them at a fairly reasonable price uh, they are charging 15% and that also is pay when able so that money is coming from sales hopefully but apart from that what this fund has done is it set two precedences one that during the deployment period of this fund uh, they have put an embargo saying interest to the current lenders will not get serviced and second they will not allow cancellation to happen they want the project to get finished and those who want to take possession take possession and then they can decide whether they want to sell or they want to go back to rera and ask for money back but if that goes through which is very very likely already i think representations are there all around with rera and with RBI is saying please allow it if it goes through there is a plethora of special situation funds without naming them that are waiting to fund these projects so credit cycle will open there are allocations for asian countries 
or emerging markets that are available uh, but that money of course is the bitter pill it's meant to be taken when you really have no option uh, that money is available between 18 and 21% uh, that's dollar denominated but that money is available uh, at 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 most it's it's called as lifo last in first out under that concept this money is available especially for uh, for projects that have some amount that that are near completion this is about two year money you assume that you finish your project and then deal at least customers off your back and then you can deal with the bankers subsequently so that's happening anuj mentioned about fdi uh, so there is still money available for uh, what we call as core assets these are fully built out office assets uh, that have uh, tenants inside and their stable income uh, we were trading these at 8% pre covid uh, we think the pricing will somewhere remain same or may even go down depending how the interest rates come come react uh, uh, last lrds we had done were at 8.5% or thereabouts but it's, it's looking like it'll come down to 8ish and therefore uh, you know these trades may continue to happen uh, but the money that's will pure equity uh, uh, for residential projects looks uh, very unlikely it's very thin capital that's available there uh, there is new money that's coming in from japan there is new money that's coming in from korea uh, which is looking to fund inventory either which is fully ready or under construction so uh, so guys there is i mean overall i think look if the project viability is there there is enough and more money that's available of course the pricing uh, has to be discussed on a case to case basis i am not overly concerned i think the the only problem will be that how do you project sales uh, going forward and more than sales the pricing uh, i don't i dare say that anybody will assume an increment on the pricing while underwriting loans uh, so you know you find a clearing price and you stay at it saying look for the duration of the project the pricing will remain same good luck if it goes up but we are not going to budget for it uh, so that's what that's all from my side guys that you know there is hope there is money both in the domestic system and international uh, for projects that have that still have viability or on a lifo basis that means last in first out and uh, and the haircut is is also being sort of taken by the current lender uh, under that circumstances um, you know i'm happy uh, to pass on this to back to anuj or prashant uh, uh, if prashant is on the call thank you anuj or uh, thank you shobit uh, thank you Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Shobit. Uh, I think he's Prashant on the call. Uh, I think he was not able to log in on my last message with him. I'm not sure whether he's come on. Okay, so I am in. Hi, Shobit. I am um, we, in. Thank you, Lord. Hi, hi, Prashant. Uh, great, great, Prashant. Can you can you just throw some light on the research and what is your take on the current uh, market, real estate market post the COVID? And uh, COVID? Uh, you know, uh, I think much has been covered by uh, Anuj and Shobhit, and they were, you know, uh, kind of uh, quite precise. So I have few, you know, subjective input. You know, what went uh, uh, in in uh, my mind when we were kind of going through it. So a couple of things that we realized while while coming up with the survey and report when we were speaking and taking feedback from the buyers. So it's not that the national demand for housing in India will go away. People want to buy house. The only time. The thing that is missing right now, that the confidence is shaken, and you know uh, when you make a purchase of house, you bank on your future cash flow. You know when you kind of you know buy a house, your majority of the saving goes in down payment, and then you bank on your future cash flow. So now, if in a situation, if if the ecosystem is helped to bridge that financing gap, I'll take an example of uh, affordable housing, which is you know is is affordable in budget, which is still a blue eyed boy of the sector and. Everybody is trying to push it. Now I call it more of an FMCG product, where the buyers are kind of you know people who are not used to buy heavy ticket prices. So if somewhere the bridge is a gap where they are not able to avail the finance and that confidence building part happens, I think the right product would sell. 
So this is what you know the first hand subjective input we got. And and uh, as as Anuj rightly said, and why, and Shovik also pointed out that you know the good project, be it you know uh, residential or let's say malls in a good catchment area, would would kind of you know come back over a long period of time. But but this is a time where you know kind of uh, the the value chain needs to be really looked at it and keeping the consumer at the center of it, which was you know kind of ignored by uh, the sector. This is you know I wanted to add, and you know I'd be happy to take any pointed question. Uh, there are thanks, thanks a lot, Prashant. Everyone has over here. I will just take a few right now. Uh, Trupti, can you just mute everyone so I can just uh, throw in a few questions? Fundamentally, first question I think which everyone uh, would want to understand is that obviously once this post this lockdown is over, there is going to be a bank pressure, there is going to be sales pressure. Do you think uh, sales would actually pick up the way, uh, I mean, where we left it or where things were, or you think there would be a little bit of a slowdown? And if yes, what is your estimate for it, for the market to come back? And I mean, what are the steps which you feel the government or as we as developers should, you know, take in, in terms of privately as developers and as a government, what should be the steps which can actually enhance the market? Uh, so happy to go ahead uh, on this one, uh, uh, Dhawal. Uh, so you know, the first thing I would say is that as developers, try and continue with the construction uh, because the confidence will get shaken uh, off the consumer if he doesn't see activity uh, on, the, on the construction. I am not a big uh, supporter of price cuts. Uh, you know, I, most of you are my friends. I, I know the balance sheets of the developers. I, I think make sure that if you are cutting the price, there's enough margin uh, left uh, in there. Otherwise, you know, it's a catch-22 position that you will get uh, caught out on uh, on that. Third is try and see if you can get, as Shobit said, is, you know, a top of funding, either from a special situation fund, and, you know, most of these guys are around, or you can do inventory funding. Uh, I mean, there are several of these guys, Hong Kong, Korean, uh, Japanese, uh, you know, some of these guys are willing to do that. So at least you've got a little bit of buffer uh, to do that. Double is the confidence going to come immediately? No, I don't think so. Uh, that, you know, tomorrow morning, if the lockdown was to open, I don't think we're going to go out and buy residential uh, immediately. You know, we will have to build that uh, confidence over a period of time. And my thought is that it is at least 90 days before the guy is going to be able to really come up. Uh, in that, but during this 90 days, it has to be very aggressive uh, follow-up that you have to do. 80% of the customers originate through digital, uh, and I can tell you across the board, many of the developers have stopped digital. Now the time the guy is looking at his WhatsApp and Google and Facebook, you should be really marketing on digital. 80% of your traffic starts, uh, you know, from there. Uh, I would also say, as uh, whilst we're talking about the sale and the revenue, one of the things is please relook at your organization. Uh, there is a lot of fat sitting in there. Uh, make sure that you're able to prune the costs uh, in there. There's a lot of discretionary spend. There are a lot of nice things to have, uh, to have in the organization. Try and cut those uh, nice things uh, to, to have. A uh, couple of other points uh, uh, to answer your question. Uh, you know, uh, Shobit also mentioned is that, you know, the financial institutions are starting and it's happened in two of our cases where they have said is that, can you demonstrate confidence of sales? Uh, so there's a concept called as EOI uh, because, you know, you also don't want to go out and start to sell. And then if it doesn't get sold properly, then you discover that you have sold 10, 12% and then got stuck with the rest of the project. Uh, so, you know, try and do this uh, uh, expression of interest uh, on some of your projects to really be able to find that what is the temperature, what is the acceptance uh, of that product. And, you know, on an EOI, you take a 1 lakh, 2 lakh rupee check. Uh, usually, there will be a, a 50, 60 percent cancellation in that. So if you're looking at, you know, selling, say, 100, uh, then you should have at least 200 or 250 EOIs to be able to uh, uh, collect. And the uh, last that I would say is... Uh, uh, is uh, double is whilst we're going to be pushing on the sales, uh, go to the Swami fund as well. I mean, it's a government sponsored fund. It's at 15%. It's quite economical. Uh, try and see if you can get a buffer 
uh, from this uh, from from the Swami Fund. It's a it's a very good thought that uh, uh, Shobit has, uh, has has put it out. Thanks a lot, Anuj. Uh, Shobit, uh, this Swami Fund would it be for any specific projects, or it can be for like a larger project? Do they have a criteria kind of a thing, or it can be even for a smaller, say, let's a redevelopment project or a large layout project, or it can be for anyone. And uh, before, I think, Shobit, if you take, there's one more, a like, lot of developers asking, there has been a, a thing that, you know, uh, funds are going to be, as you also said, the funds are going to be available in abundance and, you know, uh, money is going to be available, but the biggest factor is going to be cost. So as we all are now talking that the cost needs to be reduced, cost needs to come down, do you think the funding cost would also be coming down or would that would, because if that stays at a higher level, say 15, 18 or 21 percent, I think then we are just uh, limiting our, I mean, then the purpose is not getting served because the margins are diminishing day by day. Uh, so, uh, can you, can you just throw some light on that? Shrupti, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so very interesting question, uh, very pertinent as well, but let me try and answer it. Uh, uh, the easy one is what's happening. What's the mandate of Swami fund? So Swami funds mandate is essentially very customer focused. So they should, they, they're not really saying, look, I want to help a developer, uh, but their, their own focus is to say, I want to help the customer who's stuck on a project uh, where he's invested money, but you know, the project has stopped. So they are willing to fund from 5 crores to 500 crores on a single project. Uh, they have some criteria saying in Bombay, the apartments should be selling at below 2 crores. Every other city it should be 1.5 crores and below, right? This, the project should have net worth positive, uh, you know, balance sheet saying that the total cost to go versus total receivables, there's a positive delta. It cannot be negative, right? So they have a very set format. They're very, very open. They can, like I said, they can invest from Dehradun to Timbuktu. Really, they don't have any city criteria saying they have to help top seven cities or top eight cities, right? And they can go as low as five crores. Second on cost, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, obviously there's uh, in, it's not about developer fund financing. I think overall the finance cost of banks is going down because the repo rate is, is being reduced. Uh, there's a 75 bips uh, a positive spread, which SBI has already passed on. Other banks are passing it on. So for new projects, I definitely think that uh, greenfield projects, I think pricing will become much more reasonable. LRD, I have already told you. Uh, is on a downward pressure on 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 um, on LRD interest rates. On special situation, I I doubt or I dare say that any money is available that's below 15. I think Swami Fund is the most efficient at 15 percent. But if you're looking at dollar money, it's not going to come down in a hurry because you are competing in a global marketplace. Where Anuj mentioned that if US is starting to uh, reprice itself then India has to compete and then there is also the hedging cost that comes in. So when you're saying $15, in effect, in India, it means between 20 and 21%. Unfortunately, that's, the, that's our currency issue. It's a broader issue. It's not a developer issue. I don't think dollar money will come below that uh, in any case. Uh, but having said that, quantums are not an issue. In fact, uh, you know, they are very happy to price. Last year alone, I know one company put in a billion dollars. Uh, I know there are at least seven, eight of them. So money is available. So that's the good news. Uh, you did mention uh, on your opening remarks saying, you know, when the market opens up, there will be pressure from the banking side. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's, it's In some sense, it's, it's a good pressure because it will force you to sell, force you to think your models. But let me just give you the comfort saying this time, you're not alone. You know, it's not the developers alone. It is automobiles, it's infrastructure, it is consumer financing, it is MSCM, ME, everything is under pressure, right? And it's not your mistake. It's the global economy that's gone down. It's touched India, it's touched US. Uh, so it's nothing that we have done wrong or, or anything anybody else done wrong, right? Anuj mentioned it in the opening remarks. So I think banks are also going to be considerate by the way, the Central Bank or Reserve Bank of India is also looking at it. I think several representations have gone to say increase the Morad period from three months to 12 months. Please allow NBFCs to restructure. 
uh, you know, the restructuring concept came in 2008 when Lehman happened. It was not even our creation. And at that point, the then governor allowed restructuring of CRE to banks. They have recently reinforced it again, but they have not allowed NBFCs to restructure. So I think because NBFCs are today two third participants of developer financing, they should also be allowed to restructure loans. If that happens, that pressure will automatically ease. Nobody wants to declare you NPA. That's not in their interest as well. So guys, uh, I think when the market opens, there will be a lot of newness. Hopefully banks will listen. Hopefully RBI will listen. Maybe they do it in the second stimulus. Uh, whatever we've been hearing of the government, I think the government focus is first medical emergency, then food and essential services, and then economy. They're not saying that we're not going to help the economy. They are going to do it, but in that reference, right? So I'm assuming over a period of next three, four weeks, uh, there will be several other packages that will be announced. Uh, they are obviously going from the bottom of the economy saying we want to help the poorest of the poor and then move up that ladder. I'm sure our turn will come. And therefore, uh, guys, this time I'm really hopeful that our government has done all the right things and hopefully they will give us uh, a breather in some form or the other. Uh, there are several representations. I'm sure you guys are all close to the government and talking. Thank if you, I thank can you, just add, add one thing, uh, double just a quick one. You know, uh, yes. Shobit mentioned in one of the uh, you know last week's uh, uh, webinars. He said, "Is uh, you know, guys uh, on the real estate, you know, you guys continue to uh, hammer us, uh, and this is all the foreign you know funds who invest in real estate and others." And Shobit's comments were quite interesting. He said, "Is you know, we 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 play this game called a snake and ladders. You know, we were on the real estate community at the bottom." Uh, of that. Now, even the guy who was at the top, you know, the snake has bitten him. <laughs> and he's also come down with us only. So, you know, all of us are in that category. Uh, you know, whether it's gem, jewelry, automobile, uh, real estate, uh, manufacturing. Uh, so, we are in it uh, together and we're hoping that, you know, there will be more stimulus packages that come up. Thank you. Uh, Anuj, also if you can throw some light on, uh, you know, this co-working, co-living uh, sector, like student housing, student living. You think these, you know, these were like the flavor of the game uh, before the lockdown and people were actually mulling over it a lot. Do you think that will still continue? There will be some dip in it or what is your take on that? Uh, so, Dhawal, um, as a concept, they're absolutely fine and should continue uh, with that, uh, whether it is co-living, student accommodation or co-working uh, because as a concept I believe uh, that that is what the need is. Uh, my trouble in many of the cases is that uh, the private equity which was funding uh, some of these businesses may not continue to fund. Uh, so the problem is largely going to be coming in from the private equity which you know in VWorks case we heard uh, SoftBank has been reluctant uh, you know, on that uh, on that funding. Uh, and, but otherwise, as a fundamental business, I have no problem uh, with them. They stack up very well. It is only in the interim whether they continue to get oxygen uh, from the private equity to be able to sustain. All right. And uh, I think most of important, uh, what we've also heard and what I've also heard from your team is a lot of uh, affordable housing, which is also selling even during this lockdown period and, you know, stuff happening and we were also discussing in the Kadai thing where a lot of North developers are selling uh, uh, even during this lockdown period. Is there been a success formula or something like that even in the MMR region because that's what we all pertain to over here. I think what should be the thing where you know this affordable segment can go or what is your uptake post this lockdown for affordable segment? Would it go down further or would it still be continued? Uh, so I, I'll divide it into two parts, what's happening now and uh, the going forward. Going forward, uh, uh, if there are job losses that happen, uh, then this sector will get beaten down because the majority of the job losses are largely going to be in the skilled and semi-skilled sector. Um, and you know that is where your Prashant's team is watching it very carefully that what will happen to that because if it happens not only that the future demand may become slow, but you know, they may start to default on the EMIs. 
uh, at that time. And we're, we're hoping that, you know, we don't see widespread job losses either for manufacturing or for, uh, or for retail. So that's what's going forward. Otherwise, you know, that product sells uh, pretty well. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm very confident of that. Uh, today, uh, there are two parts to it. Uh, that will, you know, we also say is that we've done a lot of sales during this interim period. But, uh, you know, to be honest, much of this sale was really at the brink of it happening. Um, so, you know, it is majority of that we've been able to capture it today. What I would encourage, uh, you know, your members to do is uh, make sure that your sales team are really out today. And getting in these EOIs, you know, 20,000, 25,000, you know, just as a gateway. Uh, again, it is nothing more than a warm lead or a hot lead uh, in there. That's what we are being able to successfully do. That's what actually North developers are being able to do it. So it's actually not a sales sale. You can classify it as a sale because the guy's given you 25,000 uh, rupees, but it is at best a warm or a hot lead. And that is how it is selling. Would anybody do a full sale? you know, remote chance to be able to uh, do that. When I said we are at 15% efficiency, you know, much of it was, which was the overflow before the lockdown and much of it is the EOIs that we are starting to pick up. But one takeaway that I would say double from here is to the, is to the members is do not think that nothing is happening. There are several of your players, several of the large guys who are not even on the screen, uh, double who are doing. Uh, work who are on online, who are doing digital, who are doing these UIs, who are connecting with their VDNB uh, in there. And my earnest request will be is don't think this is a holiday for the staff. Uh, you know, engage with them every day in the evenings, take their reporting. How many calls have you made? Did you make 40 calls today, 50 calls today uh, to your customers uh, and keep them, keep them fairly focused and energized. So, uh, as you said that, you know, consider this as an EOI and take a 25,000, but I think there is some mismatch with RERA because some of the members just asked that in RERA, EOIs are not permitted or, you know, how do we actually, I mean, we don't want to fall from one trap to the other that we take the EOI and then somewhere down the line, maybe two, you know, one month down the line, there is a RERA which is, you know, back on our head and saying that you are not permitted because you don't have the, you know, whatever, IODCC permission. How then do we, you should how not do, do it. Do Double, you should not do it. Mm. Absolutely. It, it needs to have IOD, CC. It needs to have RERA. If it is not compliant, RERA compliant, then double, I'm not trying to do this, you know, sort of below the law and saying is that, you know, we will sub, uh, subvent the RERA Act. Not at all. It has to have, because you will go out. RERA will come to know about it uh, in that. So don't try and do where IOD, CC is not there and you're not RERA registered because RERA authorities will come to know. Uh, that you have done this. Yeah. A, yeah, sure. I was saying the project has to be RERA registered. Uh, otherwise, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, so it is after RERA registration, but before construction starts and, uh, and construction funding is drawn because in many cases, banks are not now sort of are at a point where they're not able to estimate what sales, what pricing sales will happen, what velocity sales will happen. So that is why this is required. The UI concept is coming in from there. All right. Okay. Uh, also, I think a lot of questions uh, which have, uh, you know, people in the mind uh, where everyone, because this is pertaining to Mumbai and MMR, uh, uh, you know, uh, fundamentally, Anuj, there has been, you know, talks which is coming around from yesterday that uh, there is going to be a large stimulus package which is coming from the government in the next 24 hours or 48 hours. We don't know that's what's being heard in the news. Do you think any specific on real estate would be there? And uh, uh, would there be, I mean, you know, just being a little more uh, uh, favorism to Mumbai, do you think there would be something related better for, you know, cities like Mumbai or capital cities or something like that? Uh, so I'll divide it into two parts. Uh, uh, Dhawal is, uh, Shobit said the right thing is, you know, the government has been pretty much focused and has done well. And, you know, people like us are also engaged uh, at uh, levels with the, uh, you know, various regulators and authorities and giving our inputs uh, as well. And, you know, they're, they're definitely seeking this as uh, positive. I'm not an economist, but I'll try and say uh, sort of in one or two minutes what my thought is on this. The ability of the government today uh, to breach the physical deficit is very high uh, because the oil prices have come down. Their ability to go out and print the money is very high. I think is they will follow that. 
on this occasion no opposition is going to be able to say that you know why did you not meet the fiscal deficit the circumstances are like these uh, oil is in the pricing is in favor for them to be able to go out and print money the only negative of that is that the dollar continues to appreciate if you print more money you know at this moment in time it doesn't matter to me i'm not living in america i'm living in india uh, in there is you'll have to bring uh, sort of more liquidity into the market. That's first. Second is, I genuinely think is they have understood that real estate is going to get impacted, not only in the lockdown, post the lockdown also, there is going to be uh, an impact. So I'm hoping that, you know, we will see some relaxation, uh, both from the RBI and the finance ministry, you know, finance ministry from simple things, you know, GST, uh, for example, can you bring down the uh, cost lower? From the state governments, can you um, you know bring down the stamp duty or exempt the stamp duty or bring it to very low levels for a period of time? I'm not saying as you know for the next 12 months uh, do that. From the RBI, can you do the moratorium? I mean, they've, as Shobhit rightly said, they've done it in the past uh, in 2009. You know why not uh, do it uh, today? So a, every message that has gone and every dialogue that has happened has been very proactive and very productive and very engaging. So uh, I am with the youngsters that uh, I think the government has the ability uh, today to be able to do it because all prices are low. Uh, they're not going to be worried about the fiscal deficit. And it is not inflationary at this moment in time because there's no demand only. So they can actually go and print the money. So they have the ability to do that. And on the other hand, real estate, they are aware at various uh, you know, levels that they have connected to say, we understand that this will get impacted. So we do want to do uh, something. Uh, there's a last question from uh, chat, which I'm just throwing it up across. Uh, what What do you think uh, should be the five things or the five topmost things as MCHI, uh, you know, credit? We should be asking the government, or what is the wish list which you feel which really improve the sales in 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 the entire India and specifically Mumbai MMR? Anush, in that uh, I'm nine year, so I'm sorry, Dhawal, uh, permit me. Uh, Anush, see, we have uh, five stakeholders that can give us five things. One is the central government, the state government, the corporation, uh, the RBI. So for each of them, you know, for the from the central government, five state government, five things, corporation, five things, and from the RBI, five things, or whatever you say are the priority. Right. I'd then be happy to give it, uh, uh, give it because we, you know, we've also sent the recommendation based on the request that we had uh, received. So... Uh, I, I think it'll be a little longish, so I, I'm not going to try and do the uh, full uh, this thing. So uh, four or five things then by on the state. I mean, clearly the stamp duty. I know uh, that as uh, MCHI and uh, Kridai, uh, you are discussing with them on the premiums. Uh, you know, can we stagger them? Can we make it more back-ended? Uh, at this moment in time, you know, it is very important for us to be able to conserve uh, money and not spend that money on the on the premiums uh, really upfront uh, rbi we have only two requests uh, you know one is that please give this moratorium for a year three months is no good uh, to do that and we will also need relief on emis uh, because you know otherwise we will get into the default of already sold uh, uh, you know uh, uh, products and uh, you know hopefully the interest rates will continue uh, to to come down on the, and Shobit, please add on the RBI. I know you would have from your finance point of view, uh, a few things. Uh, yeah, uh, two, two things, uh, Anuj, that are uh, actually three things uh, that are critical too from RBI perspective. One is, uh, you know, you've already said that increase the morat moratorium period, both for principal and for interest, including benefit to the customer in terms of uh, his EMIs. Per, for the wholesale banking side, I think we need to allow, they need to allow NBFCs to restructure the loan, uh, perhaps for a period of two years, but if not two, at least one year that they need to do. And also, please change the definition of NPA, which I think is on the cards anyways. So currently it is zero, 30 days, 60 days and 90 days. Uh, what we are hearing informally, well, we, nobody knows the truth, is that they're going to do it three, six, and nine months. Uh, so they will give you relief to say you'll move from as, from one to two and to finally to NPA instead of 90 days in actually 180 days. And I think that's a big relief uh, because many people here uh, actually uh, intentionally never want to default. Uh, they do everything they can to try and save it. 
uh, i think this little breather that they'll get uh, for 9 months uh, is is going to be is going to be quite nice uh, and then finally on gst uh, i don't know if both state and center governments can agree uh, you know this whole concept of 5% gst without input tax credit uh, you know is, in my view has been a kind of negative uh, my view is that they should allow input tax credit whether they stay at 5% or 7 or 10 uh, it will be better than what the current position is right because otherwise cost has gone up for the developer by 18% and cost of to the consumer has gone up by 5% it is as good as stamp duty uh, if you were to look at it so you have to pay 5% stamp duty in maharashtra plus 5% gst uh, that's a huge cost of uh, you know buying an apartment uh, i don't know whether uh, many people can absorb it at least if input tax is given then we can i think developers can absorb some of that cost uh and also 18% is too high so construction cost has simply gone up by 18% uh, broadly speaking thank you thank you uh, anuj uh, two last things uh, i think there's a lot of questions coming in i'm just trying to collate and see what what we can answer i think the the jail tell and sell story of yours uh, i think a lot of uh, developers are quite excited to hear if we can have probably maybe one of the days an offline thing or you know some oh, i mean your your sales, to... your sales team should come in uh, the will yeah. get our trainers our in house yes. trainers to do the same course what they have done with our sales team a uh, very Correct. very nice uh, thanks thanks a lot we will definitely and double by just double by just to sort of add uh, you know i know that there's a lot of question from the chat board uh, if you can just save it we'll be very happy to answer it either individually or collectively as mchi will be very happy to sort of Uh, go point by point and and provide uh, our inputs. Yes. Uh, you know, done, just, done. Just, we'll, we'll if you could that. just save those questions, yeah. Anuj, one last thing. I think we as real estate industry are also trying to you know make this as MCHI Creda and everyone that we want to give a you know as real estate is having a lot of negative notion. We want to have this kind of a positive. thing like how the mutual fund guys are doing and uh, we would request you know if anirok and you guys also join in together and see how we can actually make this industry a positive notion and give give some ideas to the government and try and change the perspective of the you know government and see and the people at large how can we make real estate a better world to stay or better industry which is acceptable and you know as how mutual funds have been so I think if some words from your end towards the real estate, I'm sure you are talking a lot of positive things. But if you also can be part of it, I think it will really help a lot of uh, you know for the government to look in in a very different eye than what it does today. Yeah. So so uh, uh, so Dhawal, I I call I I uh, speak very cautiously and uh, 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 sort of a bit of a warning to the developers. When I actually go and represent this community, I am like you know very positive. uh to the government to say as you know look look at it one of the things that shobit did mention and i think we should do with mchi today uh dhawal is that there is a lot of good work that is happening within the real estate sector in covid 19 uh which is you know people are giving their apartments to the government to be able to utilize them for quarantine uh there is contribution that is being given lots of things that we've been able to collect uh from india because we have this call with 2000 guys every day every evening and they give us snippets of what good things that the developers are doing i think a compilation of that dhawal to then send it to the government uh will be very nice rather than just talking about our business what did we as a community contribute and you guys have done fantastic i am telling you uh in that uh, hotel guys have done this by the way hospitality guys have done it and represented it to the government we are happy to lead it and put it all together and give it to the government that you know this is what we have done in this time thanks thank you lord can, can we have I the copy have... of that anuj can we have the copy of that for, for our nchi to see to it uh, i uh, i will send it to you it's a, it's still under production as soon as the first copy comes i'll send it it's all the hoteliers and all the big companies have come in together and we have noted their good work it's like a case study saying taj indian hotels has done this following has done this they've given their hotels to doctors to for quarantine etc so we we had actually requested uh, uh, i'd reached out to uh, to uh, to baman and said if you want us to do it we'll be very happy i think it's just a way of saying that look we've done all this good work 
Yeah, you know, I think we are always is... not ask. Yeah, we are always yeah. not asking you for something, but silently uh, we've been supporting the industry. You know, I'm sure you guys have done a lot of good work to for the laborers. I know so many people who've been feeding, sending food, sending essentials. I think it's a it's a nicer way to approach the government, saying we are with you, uh, and you know, by the way, can you help us? Right, rather than saying that you know, here is my five wish list. They'll say, look, we've seen it before. Can we, can we, can we, can we look at how you contributed back to the society? Uh, Anuj, one last thing, Nayan here. Uh, what we are thinking to do is a campaign, and how do you find this idea, Anuj? Is real estate sahi hai? Real estate safe hai? Real estate reliable hai? See, in this last uh, three months, everybody has seen that the stock has gone down. It is all a paper. And everybody is realizing, "Mera ghar hai, to main safe hoon. What do you think of this campaign? Very good campaign, Nain bhai. Very good and offline. You know, happy to give you inputs. We've also done some campaigns uh, internally to be able to uh, get in the confidence of the home buyer. I don't want to take everybody's time on that one. I'll I'll share those offline. Uh, so can you. I consider that you will be part of the core team because we are trying to make a cross-functional core team. You know, from different uh, stakeholders Absolutely. and make very, them very and. Happy. Very great, happy, great. Thank and you. we'll also, you know, give the ten points that we gave it to our agent to say, based on these, go out and sell. Right. Because right, you know, ultimately, sure. Nenbhai, these are the guys who are the grassroots guys. They are the ones who are giving us the information. They are the ones who are saying this thing is that my mother, father have been saying is that I should have bought the real estate. I haven't bought it. You know, ah, they are the ones exactly. who are exactly. Giving- we right. want the common man's voice to come out into this whole thing now. Okay. Perfect. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'll hand over thing to Rajiv. Rajiv Jain. He'll just uh, put in a word of thanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you so much uh, for your valuable inputs, uh, Anuj, uh, on office retail and residential markets, especially on the gel tell and sell concept, which is really unique. And uh, also, uh, how do we push on UIs for uh, rare rice projects in this uh, current lockdown times? Uh, Shobit, thank you so much for your uh, funding inputs, especially you know uh, how uh, funding is still really available for the. Uh, uh, projects which are viable. Also, uh, interest rate definitely would come down, and how stress fund will really help uh, you know uh, the projects which are really stuck on uh, payable when enable concept. Uh, Prashant, thank you for your uh, you know research uh, inputs which are there. And uh, today uh, we were uh, full house. We are you know 500 uh, members, and how we'll we'll try and uh, ramp up this, and uh, how do we increase the you know number of members who can really uh, see more webinars in the coming days. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Darmesh. Bye. 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 Thanks, Shabit. Bye. Bye, Darmesh. Bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Great work. Great work, team. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Superb, Dawal, and uh, everybody. Great. Excellent. Excellent. You know. Excellent. Superb.